Which Canadian's prospect do you think has the most upside? Uh, for me, I'm going to say Nick Suzuki, just because coming into this year, he was making the jump to pro. Uh, there was a lot of unknowns if he was going to be staying with the Canadians, if he would make the team out of camp, or if he would go down to Laval and take his time to come. But so far on the team, he's looked so comfortable. And it looks like he's almost been playing in the NHL for two, three years now. The team has not had the most successful year. They've gone through uh, winless streaks twice, and he hasn't let that bother him at all. So for me, I think he's the one that I think will be a huge factor on the Canadians going forward. It's almost hard to even call him a prospect now, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's halfway through his season and he plays like a veteran. Uh, he plays regular shift, he plays center, he plays wing, he plays power play, he kills penalties, they put him on the ice in overtime. He's, Claude Julien, it's not easy for a young player to earn Claude Julien's trust. Nick Suzuki has done that. Um, so I guess, it's almost, I said, it's almost hard to call him a prospect. He is, but it's hard to, like, so for me, I guess, to, to, he would be my pick also, but to pick somebody a little bit different, just to mix it up, I'd say Ryan Paling, uh, just because he's continually getting more comfortable in the NHL, getting his feet wet, becoming more of a physical presence. He's going to be that big physical presence that the Canadians have been missing for so long. And he's shown that he can play center or wing, the same as Suzuki. Uh, playing against the wing is, you know, the board battles. Now he wins a lot of board battles. He's hard on the puck. He's, he's strong. Uh, so, you know, Suzuki and Paling together coming up are, are really looking good. It's hard to just pick one. I mean, I agree with Paling. I think that the, the fact that he's been really good on, I think, on the, on the penalty kill, like I said, I think he can win a, um, a Selkie. I really do. I think that, um, you know, this organization, first of all, history uh, says that a Selkie trophy winner is going to be on this team mm -hmm. somewhere between uh, the history of Ganey and Carbonell. Um, I'll go different. I'll go Caulfield. Uh, down, you know, hasn't even made he's the a legit, jump yet. He's a legit prospect. That's, <laughs> that's, that's you know, uh, if you've seen some of the highlights, this kid, this yeah. shot yeah. is just, you know, his shot reminds me a lot of Paul Correa um, in terms of, you know, you look at the guy and you think, well, he's not that big, he's not that imposing, and then it comes off the stick and, you know, there should be two astronauts on those things because <laughs> it, it's just a rocket. And that's what, I'm so excited for this kid to come up and, and be in the NHL. He's one of the players, I think, that will make me buy tickets to go see a game. Well, the evaluation camp this year, uh, myself and all of us who cover hockey for a living, we, you know, you watch so many practices and so many things. You sort of sit in the press box sometimes in Brossard and you're you know, maybe not 100% focused, everything that's going on on the ice. This kid comes into the evaluation camp and he started shooting the puck and everybody in the press box is going, wow. <laughs> like, wow, like we haven't seen a shot like that around for a long time and he's not a big and, guy and, and he lets it go from anywhere like he has the puck i remember one play he came in and he had the puck sort of behind him and it looked like there was no way he, he could shoot and he did shoot and it was some junior goalie that had a net and you didn't even see the puck it hit him off the shoulder and went up over the things mm -hmm. but for for you know when you watch so much hockey and you see so many great hockey players so many great things they can do whether it's games or practice and see this kid shoot the puck and everybody just go wow like I read, a, I read a, a review about him. I mean, I brought up uh, somebody else. But they said his release is um, as fast as Sackett's was. Yeah, and wow. he, can, he can get rid of it from anywhere, right? All the good goal scorers, Stamkos, all those guys. It doesn't, the pass doesn't have to be perfect, right? It can be behind them. It can be in front of them. It can be uh, wherever it wants to be. You know, you look at Jordan Wheel <clears throat> with the Canadians right now. Because I'm playing the power play a lot, a lot of fans are really upset about that. And you see how many times he gets set up in the slot and he has to stop it, set it up, shoot, and the goalie makes the save. Those are the plays when Cole Caulfield's here, those go in the net. I mean, that's and even Gallagher as well. If he's healthy, he doesn't have to, you yeah. know, but stop he's, it. For a, kid, just... for a young kid at an evaluation camp to make all of, these, all of his reporters who watch so much hockey go, wow. I mean, that really says something. When you watch it on video, it's impressive. When you see it live, it's really impressive. I'm looking forward to, like, the Suzuki, the Mete. Caulfield, uh, Cook and Yemi, Lekin, all these guys, I'm telling you, th th this team in, in a year or two is going to be a very fast and exciting team, more so than they are now because they're going to have a little bit of experience. Yeah, that's why when fans complain, and there were so many, and there's still, it's the same old story, fire Bergevin, fire Julian, fire, you know, mostly get a president. Um, I think that, yes, in the past, maybe, but this time, it's exciting, and I don't feel so bad that the Canadians are struggling and almost certainly won't make the playoffs because the future is bright. I see a light at the end of the title, uh, at the end of the tunnel, and I'm excited. All right, go to hockeyinsideout.com now and check out this week's full episode.